at noon starts now. Another highly emotional day in the Jennifer Crumley trial. We could see the prosecution rest its case against her as soon as today. Good to have you with us this afternoon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. And I'm Kim DiGiulio. Another day of back and forth between prosecutors and the defense, which follows some emotional testimony. Sean Lay's been in the courtroom for all of it, which most recently centered on Ethan's journal. Sean, what can you tell us? Journal entries that we've seen before, but just shocking the jury, probably seeing them for the very first time, talking about having access to a gun, talking about begging his parents or his mother for mental health help, but being ignored. At the same time, the first witness on the stand today, a seasoned veteran investigator for Oakland County, but he broke down, and so did Jennifer Crumley. A lot was presented to that jury this morning. Excuse me. Excuse me. Take your time. The morning began with overwhelming emotion for the lead investigator into the Oxford High School shooting. <laughs> His name is Tim Willis, the veteran Oakland County Sheriff's Detective Lieutenant, taking the stand. It was a close contact. He told the court that the day of the Oxford School shooting, he was meeting with Oakland County prosecutors on an unrelated case. He got a call that there was an active shooter at Oxford High School. But there were false alarms that week at other schools, and he felt like this was one of those false alarms. Prior to that, we had recently had a, a similar, but it was a false alarm incident at a, at a different school. So my initial thought was this was another one of those. As Willis was rushing to his vehicle, he was told that the shooting was real. And the investigator had to take a moment as he recalled that truly shocking moment. <laughs> He says dozens upon dozens of law enforcement officers flooded the roads towards the school, rushing towards that danger, hoping to save precious lives. Tell us, please, how Tate was killed. Willis went over how each victim was killed. Horrifying details. Prosecutors playing the school security video of the shooting. Jennifer Crumley sobbed. Her attorney, Shannon Smith, could not bear to look at the screen. Back here live. Things wrapped up for the morning session without the jury in the courtroom. The judge asked the jury to leave. And then another fight here between defense attorneys and prosecutors here in this trial over those journal entries. Now, Shannon, Shannon Smith, attorney for Jennifer Crumley, wants some of those entries to be placed into evidence. Prosecutors were fighting them on that, but the, the entries would lean towards that uh, the shooter, her son, was trying to hide the fact that he was trying to get his hands on the gun. Also an entry that said that he knew the gun was being hidden but didn't know where. Lots more to dig into, guys, uh, as it continues. The, the court should be uh, getting into session here in just a few minutes for the afternoon session. Prosecutors could be getting close to resting. Back to you. Yeah, and it has certainly been gripping to watch it happen live. Sean, we appreciate it. And you can do the same thing on Local 4 Plus all afternoon. We'll be carrying that trial live as well as on ClickOnDetroit.com. Today, President Biden is campaigning right here in Metro Detroit. His visit comes just a week after the UAW endorsed the president in his reelection campaign. He's expected to meet with UAW workers in the Detroit area. We did just get word his trip has been delayed a couple of hours. Expected uh, the president will land now closer to 2 o'clock. We'll keep you posted on where he ends up today. Uh, however, uh, the president's visit not being welcomed by all. In this area, Eight out of 10 Arab and Muslim voters voted for Joe Biden. Obviously, Joe Biden does not represent those people anymore. That was a speaker from the abandoned Biden campaign. This morning, many Arab American leaders say Biden is not welcome because of his support of Israel's war in Gaza. Detroit police are warning the public about three robbery suspects they consider, quote, armed and dangerous. DPD says these three men robbed another man on Seven Mile Road and then shot him. Fortunately, the victim was OK after being treated at the hospital. But the suspects took off in a newer version of a Jeep Grand Cherokee pictured here. You can see on your screen. If you have any information, please contact Detroit police. A Macomb County man accused of killing his younger brother is back in court next week. 24-year-old Nathan Land is charged with one count of manslaughter. Police say he stabbed his 19-year-old brother after an altercation at the home in Lenox Township. A witness tried to give CPR, as did emergency crews, but the teen was pronounced dead at the scene. 
Patients and staff that say that they were terrorized by an unannounced active shooter drill at a children's psychiatric, psychiatric hospital will be getting financial compensation. The state has agreed to pay $13 million to those that were affected by the drill at the Hawthorne Center back in 2022. Four law enforcement agencies responded to the hospital with guns drawn because even the police believed it was a real active shooter situation. The money will go toward treatment and care for those who say that they were traumatized by the incident. Local 4 has been following this story for 14 months now, and if you scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen, the link will take you to the special section dedicated to this story on clickondetroit.com. Survivors of sex abuse by Larry Nassar and a parent group called Posse have withdrawn their lawsuit against Michigan State. It comes after the MSU board voted in December to release documents related to the case. The lawsuit filed in July aimed to have the board take a public vote on releasing 6,000 documents allegedly being withheld. Posse's executive director saying the lawsuit was never about the money. They just wanted the university to be transparent and accountable. A developer is adjusting plans to build a Sports Illustrated themed hotel in downtown Ann Arbor after receiving backlash from the community. The initial idea of building on the city owned Klein parking lot location with has been redrawn due to opposition from residents at a meeting at Ann Arbor City Hall on Monday. Residents argued the project wasn't appropriate for the site and preferred it to remain a parking lot. The Sports Illustrated Resort CEO says that they are now looking for a new location in Ann Arbor and still hope to get approval for the project. The organization Leadership Oakland is announcing a new grant program to help students reach their full potential. The Acorn to Oak grant program designed to give financial support to kids, which will allow them to expand their horizons across various fields, including business development, academic pursuits, and extracurricular activities. Grants of up to $1,000 are available to youths ages 8 to 18. If you've ever dreamed about touring the country in an RV, well, usually those dreams come with a fantastic RV. Well, now that dream could start coming true. Yeah, you never know. Or you can, you know, buy a fixer-upper, perhaps. <laughs> uh, it's the 58th annual Michigan RV and Camping Show at Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi. There will be hundreds of campers, RVs, and motorhomes to check out, ranging in price from maybe a couple thousand dollars to a half million dollars. That's the one you're looking for, Jason. Uh, there will also be financing on site. Okay. The show runs through Sunday. We're going to need some financing for sure. Uh, what <laughs> for we, your half million dollar RV. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you'll need some uh, some roads to be nice and clear, but that's not a problem today. Yeah, Ashley is taking care of that aspect of our road trip. <laughs> there you go. So we are looking at some pretty nice conditions this afternoon on the roads. In fact, we've broken apart some of the cloud cover down to ourselves. So hooray for the folks in Monroe getting a little sunshine today on this February 1st. Rest of us still dealing with mainly cloudy skies and a little drizzle being reported right now in Pontiac. And we knew any kind of sprinkle or spritz that we would see would be very isolated throughout the afternoon and into the evening. So 42 degrees right now at Metro Airport, looking like the sun struggling to try to get through that cloud cover. 41 in Ann Arbor, 38 in Lapeer and and Monroe at 44 degrees and we have some lighter winds out of the west right now. So here's a look at clouds and radar where you can see how we've had a little bit of clearing just in that southern tier of lower Michigan but we're getting more of the cloud cover coming from the north and that's with an approaching cold front. I'll zoom in just a little closer because even that little sprinkle that's being reported in Pontiac there's that sliver of moisture that was picked up on radar. So your forecast with the rest of the afternoon. It's going to be even milder today. We're in the mid 40s throughout the afternoon. 45 the forecasted high close to 3 o'clock. But I won't rule out a couple more little isolated drizzle patches out there, especially after we get past sunset where I think we could have a stray shower or two. But the next three days are trending drier. 39 degrees for Groundhog Day, mostly cloudy skies. A little bit of clouds breaking in the afternoon and plenty of sunshine comes Saturday and Sunday with a warm up. We'll have more on that in a few minutes. However, if you are anticipating that sun, you not only can track precipitation on our radar and our forewarned weather app, but you can put the cloud cover um, feature on there and see when you have clearing in your neighborhood.